She's called me the past couple of days in just debilitating fear. She's been a mentee of mine for over a decade. And I referred her back to the study we did almost a year ago now on Psalm 23. When I study with my Women of Valor group, I have a group I lead that meets monthly. One of the studies we did last year, May of 2023, was Psalm 23. And I want to read to you how it's reworded from my parsing of it in Hebrew, its original language. This was my take on diving into each word that was written in Psalm 23 in the Tanakh. As I took each word and parsed it through Hebrew, what did it say to me? Because in English, it's beautiful and amazing and you should memorize it. But there's even more when you study it through God's original language, because every Hebrew word has a root in a verb. And it's a root of a verb that really applies a lot more to Adonai, Hashem's role as our creator and us as the created being. So this is how I reworded it in Hebrew. Do your own study, do your own research. I encourage you at minimum, re 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 memorize it in English. But here's how I um, parsed it. I am the Lord God Almighty. I set you free. Rest. Let me lead the way because my way is calm and peaceful. You will persevere no matter what. As I, Hashem, Adonai Elecheinu, Yeshua HaMashiach, will replenish you. I will set you on the right path so you can walk out your salvation with fear, reverence, awe of me. When you encounter the death and darkness in this present world that has forgotten me, has forgotten Hashem, I will walk beside you as your protector. I am your bodyguard, the creator of all the universe. My strength and my family, a family, legions of angel armies will support you forever. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in this temporal time and space as it is in the heavenlies. This physical space matters. You are going to come back. You tell us you are going to return. You've played us a visit, showed us how to walk it out. Showed us how to understand all your truths, all your laws, all your commandments, which should be heard as bumpers on your bowling alley. Fences to keep you safe, not limitations. Fences to keep out the enemy attacks, some of which are your own, that even from the inside are destroying you. But even in the innermost of inner, the Holy of Holies, as the Lord designed in his tabernacle and his Mishkan, there's the Holy of Holies, which is untouchable by those enemy attacks, your own included, on the inside of the tabernacle. So there's the boundaries that keep out the outside influences of your heart mind, your lev, your heart mind. And there's even the Holy of Holies. If you are in Yeshua, if you are in the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you were following this path of Hashem, he is providing those boundaries of delight, Gan Idan, boundaries of delight to keep you safe and abundant, running naked and free. This present world is not that. <laughs> it will become that. He will come back and replenish his kingdom in this territory. But in the meantime, he is calling upon us, those of us who are Gentiles, who are Messianic Gentiles and place our faith in this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and allows us to be grafted in the vine, Romans 19, to be followers of Hashem, to follow his ways and his truths as he came and showed us in his son, his physical manifestation of himself, Yeshua HaMashiach. We follow that line, we follow those attributes, and we don't deny his Torah, his Tanakh. We don't deny his original scriptures because our God, Yeshua, followed them. So if you call yourself a follower of Christ, you've got to go recognize who he is as a Jewish rabbi. Again, the Jewish community may not be recognizing him as Messiah, but they certainly recognize him as a great prophet. 
They may not recognize him as Messiah, and Adonai will figure that out with them. He's calling all of his uh, old, his, his Bechor, his first children, his first sons, back home to him. We are the grafted in the vine servants of our Lord, servants of the kingdom. Figure that out on your own. I'm not going to get into it. Right now, all I want you to do, those people who are burdened, heavily burdened, to the point of wanting to disappear, to the point of wanting to maybe not off yourself because you're not going to quite go there, but your mind is hovering in that dark, awful space. It is a sick feeling in your stomach and, and you, you can't take enough ashwagandha and you don't want to take uh, Lexapro's and, and Ritalin's and I don't even know all the names, um, all the ADHD stuff that they prescribe because maybe you've tried them and they didn't work at the time or they made you too, too uh, I've taken them. The first three months of taking uh, acetylopram, which is a uh, generic version of Lexapro, for the first three months, I was out of it, out of it. Um, and my doctor pro made me promise I would take it for minimum of six months and a maximum at least a year, which I said yes to. Again, so in that, and it worked out fine for me, but I had to kind of use it for that time frame for the where I was in that space and place of my life at that time. I needed extra help because all the meditation, yoga, prayer, fasting, uh, uh, <laughs> biblical counseling, every just it was nothing was kind of getting me over that hump. I had bits of my brain, my neurological uh, pathways were, were misfiring. And so the uh, the chemical help, allowed it to kind of whew, kind of readjust itself. I needed some healing on the brain, right? And so I got some medically. And so that's great. I appreciate all that. So my point is, this woman calls me, has been calling me on a daily basis because I told her to, a mentee of mine for over a decade now. And I directed her back to Psalm 23. I directed her back to the Women of Valor study that we did back in May, told her to pull down the PDF, look at the words. Again, I gave her that um, in there. I kind of give my translation that I read to you. I also then went into, and I broke down each line in Hebrew even. And again, this is just Cassandra's one person's analysis of it, right? There's only so much I understand. And even anything I've said, any of this that I've said could be confusing at any point in time to you. Please reach out. I am, by the grace of God, I have the freedom to walk around as an emissary of the Lord. I, I have the freedom to give my time and energy and effort to his children that reach out. I have lots of roles that I play. I play the role of wife. I play the role of business owner. I play the role of uh, minister to groups that I, Bible studies that I lead. I play the role of mother. I play the role of sister and daughter and what else do I play? You know, board member. I'm on the board member to nonprofits, to charitable organizations. I play lots of roles. But who I am is a created being of the Lord, of the King of Kings, Adonai Elechenu Yeshua HaMashiach. This is who I claim to be, the, 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 the Bible, the Tanakh, the, the Tanakh and the New Testament, the book that I follow, those, the scripture that I use to organize my life and to create bumpers on my bowling alley, I follow what it says. I dive deeper and deeper into it so I can better understand not just how to adjust my life for me per se, but how I can understand how to be a better ambassador for him because I am unequivocally clear, undeniably clear. I am not created, nor are you, for my purposes. I am created for his purposes. I am a created vessel. He is the potter. I'm a cup. I'm a vase. I'm a bowl. I'm a plate. I don't know what I am. I don't know what I want to be yet. I don't know. I think maybe I'm a cup. I'm a cup. I like the cup because my cup overfloweth. By the grace of God, I have walked through multiple valleys of darkness. I've had to kill off. He has pruned. He has burned through the fire. He has beaten the chafe of the wheat of Cassandra to pull out the dross that was not serving him and you. And so... If you are in a space and a place where you are just so heavy burdened that you can't take it, I understand I've walked to the valley of death, the cold, painful, dark valley of death. One time was a decade and I thought that would undo me. There's lots of stories I've told over the years about that decade. 
and I've had smaller valleys since then. Thank you, Jesus. It's not been a 10 year valley. I recently had about a five year valley about my marriage in particular, but it wasn't even necessarily about my marriage. Again, if you understand marriage, it was about God bringing me to another level of understanding of who he is and what marriage, echad, the oneness of man and woman, the only way the Lord wants his children to unite man, woman. There is just man, woman. He wants us to unite in marriage and give of ourselves intimately, vulnerably, nakedly with each other. And as we learn that process, we learn what it means to give it to him because here's what you're going to find in your human mate, your, your spouse. They don't do it well. They don't receive my nakedness, my vulnerability well. Not always, but sometimes they don't. And then I'm blown away because I thought this was it, Lord. I thought this was the height of your institutions. It was the first institution you designed and it's still not good enough. It's not giving me everything I want. What's wrong with this man that I married? He's cruel in these areas. <sighs> because the Lord asks us, the Akeda, bring your most precious desire and put it on that altar. Jesus did not go to the cross, so I did not have to. Jesus went to the cross to show me how. Jesus did not go to the cross, so you did not have to. Jesus went to the cross to show you how. <sighs> Lots of words. I pray this has been helpful. I pray this has stirred something inside of you that is calling you to seek out one of those wise counsel that has come into your life that maybe you dismissed because you thought they were an idiot, stupid, blind, ignorant. Uh, doesn't mean you have to reach out to me, but if you do reach out to me, my number, my email, my website, everything's, I'm so available to you. I live in a glass house, folks. And yes, that means the haters hate, the enemies throw rocks, and yes, it hurts. I've been through it many a time. It's sickening in my stomach how much the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But I know the Lord tells me, I have come so you may experience abundance. This outrageous, inexplicable, undeniable, mind-blowing abundance. So folks, I know I don't know all of you. And these are just words to you maybe. But they're not to me. I love you and I want the best for you and I can't give it to you. But I hope this has helped you just get closer to it, which means getting closer to him. You got to look at his word. You got to look at his word. In his mighty name, in the name of Adonai Eloheinu Yeshua HaMashiach. Shalom.